When these things came out in the 1980s, they were supposed to be the answer to all our musical prayers, if you remember. The compact disc, and this is how they were originally packaged in long boxes. And if you got rid of these long boxes, then they were much easier to store than LPs. CDs were also more durable than records, and the sound supposedly didn't deteriorate. So why is it then that so many of us kept on buying the same CD, essentially? over and over again. Well, in this video, we're going to be looking at some of the ways that the Japanese record companies attempted to improve the sound quality. And hopefully at the end, we'll get a chance to listen to a few samples as well. One of the first series of Elvis CDs that supposedly had improved sound was the Prime One series from 1995. And they all had this blue obi design with the Prime One logo up there and the K2 logo down here. K2 was a newfangled remastering technology developed by Victor. It's called K2 because the two developers both had surnames beginning with the letter K. So reading from their website, it says K2 was developed in a joint project between a hardware engineer from a consumer appliance manufacturer and a studio engineer involved in the production of music. The aim of the development concept is to produce the same quality as the source, original music source, and the principle is to faithfully restore the sound that existed in its original form. This album and this one are the only two that I have from the Prime One series. There were another six Elvis CDs released in that series, Blue Hawaii, Aloha from Hawaii, That's the Way It Is, and uh, three others. In fact, these two Although the 1950s albums originally recorded in mono, these two CDs are actually in electronically reprocessed stereo. So if you're interested in getting hold of any Elvis CDs in that format, I know a lot of people don't like it, but these two CDs can be picked up fairly cheaply, especially if you find a copy without the OB. Whether that was done by error or by choice, I'm not sure. I do have a full set of K2 CDs. They were released individually, but it's a series. It's actually a series comprising Elvis's last studio albums, 10 CDs in all. So let's have a look at those. I'll just show you one in detail because they're all basically the same. So the first one in the series was from Elvis in Memphis. There's the back. You can see it says K2 Mastering down here. And there was actually uh, a special offer with this series. You see that little oval there with some text in it? That tells you there was a special offer. And the presents that were available by lottery were T-shirts, pamphlets, key holders, and ball pens. I'll just briefly show you the disc. All the discs in the series had that same design, so they were made to look a little bit like an orange label RCA record. Booklet is a standard Japanese booklet with all the lyrics, liner notes, and so on. So, can you guess what the second one in the series of 10 was? That was Back in Memphis. The next one, any guesses? Love Letters. And they were all released in this Artist of the Century series as well. The next one, anybody, was Elvis Now. And you can see that they all use the American Rear artwork. Next one was Fool. So the early Japanese CDs, the first releases of these CDs, in most cases, um, or in some cases, had different back cover designs. Let's raise on rock. Good times. Promised Land.
today. And the last one, of course, was from Elvis Presley Boulevard. And it includes the recorded live text there. The infamous recorded live text, te uh, text, text, text. Okay, so what's interesting about these obbies is if you line them all up together, you actually get, see if you can see it, you got a little picture of Elvis there in Aloha from Hawaii. There's his head and here's his mic over here. So that's a full set there, 10 CDs. So that was K2. Another technology that was developed supposedly to improve the sound quality of CDs was SHM CD. That stands for Super High Material, and it was developed by JVC Kenwood in 2007. I'll get into the technology involved in just a moment because it's related to the next one that I'll talk about. However, the first record company to release CDs using that technology was in fact Universal. So presumably they licensed the rights to do so from JVC Kenwood. And here's an example of an early SHM CD, Regatta de Blanc by the police. You can see it says SHM CD down here, but in fact that's uh, printed on a plastic slipcase, not on the artwork itself. And that's how the earliest SHM CDs were released. And they caused quite a buzz at the time, and these particular CDs, the early ones with the slipcase and the, uh, the green obi, they quickly sold out and started to sell for very high sums of money. I was recently talking to Mark from uh, Elvis, Mark's Elvis for Everyone channel, and I was explaining to him how much I hate the music from the 80s, or at least I did back in the day. I don't have so much animosity towards it these days. And The Police is one of the few bands that was around in the 80s that I actually really liked and still do. Although to me, this is the more of a 70s band. This album came out in the late 70s. So I think of them more of a 70s band. Anyway, that's by the by. The first Elvis CDs to come out using this SHM technology, SHM CD technology, came out in uh, October 2008. And it's Golden Records yet again. There were two series of Elvis CDs, and they all had this black, blue, and gold SHM CD logo. And you can see this little gold strip there below the logo, and it's also true with the first one that we looked at, the Police CD. They were very keen to point out the fact that these CDs could be played on any regular CD. Um, because I believe there was another format, SACD I think it's called, which um, was not able to be played on regular CD players. So these Elvis CDs actually had uh, bonus tracks. And the only other one I have is the Elvis CD. This one actually came out in 2009. And this was part of the second series. And I've explained already on another video, but I'll mention it again here. If you do buy this particular CD, the Elvis CD, in this format, SHM CD, you've got to be really careful. Make sure you don't get the one I have with the white barcode. So the CD contained in this box, in this jewel case, it says Elvis on the disc, but it actually plays the Elvis Presley CD. So if you do get this CD, make sure it's got a yellow barcode. Okay, so they withdrew copies like this one and they replaced them with the correct CDs and the barcode is yellow. Right about that time, something known as Blue Spec CDs started appearing. This was a technology developed by Sony and there were two Elvis CDs released using that technology. They were 30 number one hits and second to none. So this was a manufacturing process rather than a remastering technology. And the basic point here is that the CDs were manufactured on Blu-ray pressing machines. And uh, according to the uh, Bumpf online, there are two main differences between um, blue spec manufacturing and conventional CD manufacturing as follows. Blue spec uses polymer polycarbonate resin developed for Blu-ray discs as the disc material. It's a technology similar to SHM CD. So SHM being the CDs we just looked at. Uh, point number two, a blue-violet semiconductor laser developed for Blu-ray discs was used for cutting. 
it has the effect of creating pits with high accuracy. So I guess the idea there is that your CD laser reads the disc with a greater accuracy than older CDs. Therefore, you get more of the information out. Therefore, it sounds better. I guess that's the logic behind it. So as I say, Blue Spec and um, SHM were basically manufacturing techniques, whereas K2 was a remastering technology. And shortly after that, there was actually Blue Spec CD2, which is, as you can imagine, supposedly an improvement on Blue Spec CD itself. There was only one regular Elvis CD released uh, on BS CD2 or using BS CD2 technology. That was the first album. However, the box set, a 10 CD box set up there, which I did a video about a few months ago, was also released using the BSCD2 technology. And we're going to be listening to, hopefully, um, a little extract from one of those CDs. OK, so let's go and listen to some music. OK, we're going to try and listen to a couple of extracts from the song Little Sister from four different sources. The first one we'll hear is from this Japanese copy of Return of the Rocker, going back to the mid 80s, 86, I believe. Then we'll listen to the K2 version and that particular version comes from the 10 CD box set, the complete single collection, which I did a video about several months ago. Then we'll listen to the BSCD2 version, which is the most recent version, and that is included on the um, 10 CD box, the Elvis the Ultimate Collection. And finally, just for fun, I'm going to play a couple of extracts from this CD here from 1987, La Legende. This CD actually contains a different version of Little Sister. It's actually take six, but the sound on this CD is so completely different to any of the other three that I thought you might be interested in hearing it. The CD actually has a few other alternate takes which are not mentioned on the artwork or uh, yeah, or either on the back cover or in the booklet. So I might do a video on this at some point. La Legende. Okay, so let's have a listen to Little Sister. Little sister, don't you Little sister, don't you Kiss me once or twice And say it's very nice And then you run Well, I dated your big sister And I took her to a show Little sister, don't you Kiss me once or twice And say it's very nice And then you run Well, I dated your big sister And I took her to a show Little sister, don't you kiss me once or twice Then say it's very nice and then you run Well, I dated your big sister And I took her to a show Little sister, don't you Little sister, don't you kiss me once or twice Then say it's very nice and then you run Well, I dated your big sister and I took her to a show. So what did you make of that lot? By the way, I recorded all the music directly from my CD player, which is a Denon DCD600NE, straight from the CD player to Audacity on my PC. They were recorded at the same levels, and you probably noticed that the oldest one, Return of the Rocker, this one sounds much quieter than the others certainly much quieter than the K2 and BSCD2. This one, to me, sounds very bassy and a little bit muddy, but I quite enjoy listening to this on some occasions. So could you tell any difference between the K2 and the BSCD2? And did you have any favorites among them? Let me know in the comment section below. That's it for this video. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers.